Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So we're going to talk about money today, guys, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. So I am excited to to jump into this field structure with you all today. Uh, money is is something that uh, I didn't have, and now I have a lot of. And so uh, it's not got nothing to do with me. And it's got everything to do with structure. And we're going to talk about that structure of money and make sure we get you in the right structure so that it can flow to you. Who likes the sound of that, by the way? Just uh, just really allowing yourself to get in that structure and have it and and be be friends with it and everything else. Because there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff around money. And it, it is very interesting because if you look at the the psychology of where money sits in importance to our um, our being. We, uh, we, we a lot of times like to think that money's, you know, so it's not that important or whatever. But, but the truth is, is that uh, as a society, we, we really worship, worship it. And you might not want to admit that on a conscious level, but uh, on an unconscious level, uh, you know, money uh, allows you to have certain things. It takes certain things away. You know, you can stay at this hotel if you have this much of it. You can only stay here if you don't. You don't get this these new pair of basketball shoes because we don't have enough of it. And you get told by your parents that they have to leave you and, and go and, and go and do it. Does that make sense? Money is a very interesting topic for us to, to work on. And, and that's because if you grew up in a working class family, you had to go through the, the painful experience of there was something that you desired in life and you weren't allowed it because of money. You also would have gone through an experience of then having to give up your most precious asset in the whole world, your time in search of this thing. And then weirdly, you're told that it's not important. You're told that you must work really hard, get good grades and get a good job so that you can have uh, nice things and uh, quote freedom by obtaining this this mystical uh, force, this mystical substance called money. Isn't it true? Isn't it confusing? Isn't it confusing? And so, you know, we're, we're told that you can't be spiritual and make money, yet every time you go to church, there comes the tithing box. We're told it's, uh, you know, you have to rip people off uh, in order to have lots of money or others uh, might be luckier than you because they won lottery. And you see your parents going and spending $5 a week, hoping, praying that they could win a lot and having jokes, you know, well, we don't have money for that. Money doesn't grow on trees. And, and, you, and you, you get into a weird structure where you actually have a relationship to money. Does that make sense? Mum, dad, money, the three things that can give you life and take life away. Is it true? So it's, it's, a, very, it's a very weird um, symbol of power a very weird, um, a very weird topic because even those who shun it or don't don't desire it, even they don't have it in in, in its essence and in its truth. And so, so it becomes a very weird topic. And it's weird. It's so weird. There's crazy courses out there that tell you you've got to download some money codes or that there's certain beliefs or if you walk around your neighborhood saying, I love money and money loves me, that the heavens are going to open up and, and pour $100 bills into your bank account. Uh, there's weird concepts that if you, if you spend it, it's going to come back to you, you know? It, just, just weird, just all sorts of weirdness about this thing. And, and so uh, one, of, one of the things I love is to bring it back to, to its truth. Makes sense. We've got so much ideas about this thing, about what we have to be to have it, or what we what we can't be to have it, or who should have it, or how bad they are for having it. And who agrees? There's a lot around it. So, so you know, uh, 
a friend of mine said to me uh, just yesterday, he said, money loves speed. I was like, how could it? Like, what, what, what do you mean it loves speed? And so there's, there's just so much uh, out there, you know, really interesting things. The more you help, the more you'll make, you know, your net worth is your net work. You know, how many other things can we find that rhyme to, to create so much crappy uh, uh, knowledge around this? So, so here's, here's what we've got to first get to is, is that it's not personal, it's structural, okay? And so uh, money doesn't care about you, okay? Money doesn't care about you. And I just want you to hear this from me. You don't have to feel happy to have money. You don't have to feel positive to have money. No, you, you just don't. I know many people that have lots of it and are not happy. And, and that's not saying you should be unhappy to get money. I know people that are really unhappy without it. I know people that are really happy without it. You see, I know people that meditate that have money. I know people that would never meditate and have money. True. I know people that do really good things and have money. I know people who do really good things and have no money. I know people who do really bad things and have money and people who have really bad things and don't have money. Does this make sense? Uh, Amy says money can never be a God to me. This, that makes no sense. I mean, appreciate the comment, but of course, you know, but th that's like saying, it's like saying, uh, you know, a ham sandwich will never be God to me. Like it, it's, 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 it's just not even, it's not even relevant. Does that make sense? I, I, I know that maybe I shouldn't have just gone bang with that. Maybe it's a bit brutal to say that, but it's just, it's just, it's just, there's so much like, this. not even need, we don't, wouldn't even need to say that if we didn't have such misguided ideas out there. Is it true? Yeah, so was, someone says that um, Bob Proctor says it's our servant. All, all sorts of stuff, hey, all sorts of stuff. And, and so, so first off, we just got to got to realize that you don't have to be any anything. Yeah, thanks, Amy. I really appreciate it. It's just like we just got to we got to get ourselves out of this muck first. OK, we just got to we got to separate the got to separate it. OK, you're over here. Money's over here. And so 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 what is it? OK, let, let's just get to what it is. Most of you, I think, have heard me say this, but some of you, it might be a surprise. So write it in. Money is a measurement. Okay? Money is a measurement. Money is a measurement. Okay, so what else is a measurement? A mile. A kilometer. That's a measurement. A kilogram. That's a measurement. It's a measurement. A stone. A pound. It measures something, okay? So first off, it's a measurement. We must understand it's there to measure, measure something. So on, on one hand, we must get into this point that it's measuring. So we got to ask ourselves, okay, so it's a measurement. That makes sense. It's there to measure. You know, we didn't want to have to trade, uh, you know, a, a whole cow for um, some, some, some chicken eggs. So we had to learn how to measure. So what does it, what does it measure, okay? Well, it measures value, okay, it measures value. So it measures value. And so you say, well, that's worth this much of this measurement and that's worth this much, okay? So, so it, measures, it measures value, okay? And, and, and that's what we have to realize. So it measures, it measures value. Now value, what is value, okay? Well, value is, is really inherent with something that increases satisfaction or decreases pain. So we, we think something is valuable if we personally believe it will increase our satisfaction in life or will decrease our pain, right? Like, oh, wow, yeah, I would like to have steak for dinner. That's increasing my perception. Oh, yeah, I would like to go to Disneyland. That will increase that. Oh, I would like to have you perform a massage on me, decrease my pain. Does that make sense? So, so that's value, okay? So it's a measurement of, of value, okay? So, so once, we, once we start to get this, it's a measurement of value. Well, you've got to ask yourself, well, how do you first, how do you collect a lot of it? Okay. Well, if you want to collect a lot of it, what you must do is give value to other people in a way they want to pay for it. If you want to collect a lot of it, you must give value to other people in a way they desire to pay for it. Okay. Which is a very important part of that sentence because we all know you can give value and not get paid for it. Okay. You can give value. You can go and you don't, and you don't have to get paid for everything. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about 
if you do want to, okay? And, and so what happens is money's a cycle because when they give you, when you give them some of, some of your, uh, you give them value, they give you a, 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 an exchange, right? So they're going to say, I want more satisfaction or less pain, and you've got something that's going to help me do that. So I'm going to give you some of this measurement device to get some of that. And it's beautiful, okay? But then what happens is you end up with money, okay? So then what does money become? It's a measurement, and it becomes a unit of choice. Then money becomes a unit of choice. It's a measurement of what you can then choose of which value you'd like to choose. Oh, I, I choose, I value that. I, I value having a learning magnetic mind. I value that. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to give value to an employer or give value to someone else. They're going to see value in it. They're going to pay me. And then I'm going to say, well, I want that. So, so it increases. Then I'm going to put it there. So it allows us to have more freedom in our choices. Does that make sense? So, so if you want to have lots of choices, if you want to have lots of choices, the system that we've created, we've said, well, what we're going to do is in order for you to have lots of choices, you're going to add value to other people in a way they want to pay for it. And then you're going to get lots of this measurement. And then you're going to be able to then use that in your own choices, you see. And, and nowhere in that does it say you need to be talented. Nowhere in that does it say that you need to love what, what it is you're doing. And none of it says you need to work hard. You see, you can have someone else do the work, right? It's, you know, you can create something that works without you, right? And, and so, so let's just get into this, this essence of what money is. If you want to receive a lot of it, right? You always want to receive a lot, but you don't need a reason why. Money doesn't care if you have a reason why. Money's simply a measurement of value given to other people in a way that they want to pay for it. Does that make sense? It doesn't, it's not an energy. It's, a, it's not an energy. People say money's energy. No, it's not. The thing that it measures might be an energy. Does this make sense, everyone? So, so we first just got to get out of all this, 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 uh, this weird weirdness, right? We look at everything and, and you look at any way someone's been able to receive money. What they've done is they've been able, and so we get the, you know, oh, the pharmaceutical industry makes so much money. Oh. Well, 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 if people didn't want to take pills, you know, if they didn't have a desire to just take the shortcut, <laughs> there's, there'd be no market. <laughs> you know, <laughs> humans, path of least resistance, oh, I need to work out and eat more vegetables, or I can just take that, uh, that pill that decreases my uh, blood pressure, I'll take that. You see, oh, pharma, oh, pharmaceutical industry. See what I'm saying, right? You know, because their essence in it is, and, and you know, I know they, they're, they're really freaking terrible. But, but my point is, is to help you to see the structure of it. Does that make sense, guys? Isn't everything energy, aren't we creating through? <laughs> Imagine if all of our thoughts created, you know? Imagine if we lived in a world where everyone's thoughts just mystically created what they thought about. And this is a misguided thing that some teachers try to say, true, that you can think about it and it's going to turn up, but, but it's, it, it's just not true. I've, I, otherwise, we all just sit here and go, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire. It'd be a very crazy world if, if that was true. Right, it's bit, you know, just it'd be it'd just be very, very, very. Someone says it'd just be it just it wouldn't even we wouldn't even actually like it. I know you, you know, and I appreciate appreciate. I mean, through meditation or all these different things, you know, we we get to create in the fifth dimension through meditation, but we've got to act in this plane. You know, you can we can sit and get into the vibration of money as much as we want, but if we simply don't understand its structure, and we don't, you know add value if we don't understand the structure how's it going to turn up you know does that does that make sense like how's it going to, i'm just being practical here you know i'm just being practical i mean i'm saying well you know ensure some of my go well well chris you know you can marry someone and then they've got all this all this money and that's how you get it and, and you know that, that might be true but, but if we look at a, a, a working premise we go Money's a structure, it flows to those who add value. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. So, so it's very important that we just get ourselves into just a very humble place. When you, when you realize that money's not about you being extra talented or working hard or being super smart, all of these things, you realize it's just a structure and you just got to know the structure and then it doesn't change you. You see, because you don't have to be, you don't have to do or be, or you don't have to be anything other than you. Someone once told me, they said, Chris, money is a magnifier. <laughs> Money's a magnifier. It just makes everything bigger in your life. Uh, part of me was like, well, but there's parts of me I don't know. Or I don't want to be bigger. That's not, it's not anything. It's just a, it's just a measurement of choices. Okay. It's really, uh, it, it's really, it's really cool. And, and so, so you can just feel really happy and relaxed that it's just a complete structure. Okay. Does the premise hold? Is it a good working premise? What do you guys think? Money's a measurement. Uh, and to, to receive more of it, you must find ways to add value to, to other people in ways that they desire to pay for it. And then that just becomes your focus. Okay, cool. So there is an infinite amount of ways you can do this, right? An infinite amount of ways. You can lend money to other people and then you can earn interest. You can have a business like a dry cleaners or a cafe or a personal training studio, right? You could have a, a, a coaching business. You could have an online product. You could sell books. You could make crafts. You could be a chef. You could have a job. There's, there's just there's so many things you could do. You could own a property and then rent it out. You could own a bicycle and rent it out. There's just, there's just an infinite amount of ways. You, know, you don't have to be passionate about it. Money doesn't care if you're passionate about it. One of the things I believe is, is you, you can make money in a good structure and then do what you're passionate about for free. You know, you don't need to take everything and, and turn it into a money making. It's just not what you need to do. And so, and so, so there's just infinite amount of ways to add value to other human beings in a way that they want to pay for it. You've just got to be doing it. Does that make sense? You just got to choose. You just got to do it. Now, if you want to make lots of it, there's a few other rules, right? And so, the the first rule is, is you must be able to deliver that value without with with little time, without your time. Does that make sense? You must be able to deliver it without your time. The next is, is not just deliver it. You must be able to get it uh, to the person without your time, distribute it. And then the last thing is you must be able to sell and market it without your time. So like level level one is, is learning how to give value to someone else, right? In a way they want to pay for it. Then level two is, is then figuring out how to do it without your time. Does that make sense? And then once you do that, it, it's really cool. Like it's really, it's really fun. Like money really gets a different sense. Okay. Because if you've had to only use your time to make money, okay. If you've only ever had to use your time to make money, you've had to give a piece of your flesh. Like my dad says this, he goes, yeah, they, they get my pound of flesh. He says, they, say, they get, they get that. I, I work hard for it. When you work hard for it, you re you're really worried about losing it. Does that make sense? You're really worried about what you put it on and there's a limit. And, and, and the reason why there's a, there's a limit is because the only way you know how to get it is through your time. <laughs> That's funny, Dean. You see, it's, uh, it, if you've only been able to get it through your time and if you grew up around people that are only able to get it with their, their time, it's going gonna, it's gonna to seem like this, this thing that can run out. Why is that? If you only grew up around people that only created money with their time, that was the only way they had money, just with their time. Their relationship to, to the money is that they had to give their life to get it because your time is your life. Does this make sense? And if you have to give your life to get it, especially if you had to do something you didn't like, like if you had to do something you didn't like, for example, anything that you wouldn't have done for free, then they had to do it for money, you see. And so then it gets this whole other aspect to it. They're not just handing over a $10 bill. They're handing over half an hour or an hour of their life. Does that make sense? Can you see the feeling versus someone who creates and has money without their time, they're, they're just, it's just a measurement thing that they have. Who can feel the difference? I just want you to feel into that. One person who had to give an hour of their time to get that to buy it versus the other person who created something and, got, and, and was able to just spend it. 
it's it's very different you see it's very different but notice money doesn't mind how you add value to other people you see and money doesn't money doesn't mind it doesn't mind if you use your time or if you create a system, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not about that. And it's just your choice, right? You can have this information. You can just keep giving your time or you could choose to create something. And it's, it's, it's no big deal, you know? And so it, it's really, um, thanks, Sean. Who's getting it, by the way? Who's getting it? Money's just, a, it's just a structure. It's just a measurement that works, that, that uh, measures something. And that something is value. And value is nothing but decreasing pain or increasing pleasure. That's what the value is. It's how we value something. And that's why we all have different values. We, we, you know, we've different. And then from that value, if we want to get lots of it, we must just give people value in a way they want to pay for it. And that's it. That's it. And so, so, so once, we, once we get ourselves out of all this muck, I've got to work hard. Who's hurt? Who's hurt? You know, got to work hard to make money. Got to have all these things. So it's, um, and money doesn't grow on trees. Blah, 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 all this stuff. Let's just realize it's just measuring value given in the world. And people just had an incorrect model. Oh, you know. Callum asks, Chris, do you, do you have um, gratitude for the old structure? It just, it just is, you know, it just is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. So, so let's let's figure out what our relationship here uh, is, is to money. Someone says money does grow on trees, apples, and oranges, and and I and I like I like the start of that. The potential to make money is growing on that tree, because that's value. But it must then be turned into something, you know, you must actually, you must get it to someone and have them pay for it. Does that make sense? So it's potential. So I just, I just say, well, there's potential there, you know, right? There's, there's potential for you to, to create it. What happens if someone creates a structure just to make money and they do not put their heart into it? Where is the fine line? You don't need to put your heart into it. You don't need to put your heart into it. You can you can just buy something. You can just buy something. See, there's so much there. Like uh, you know, like seriously, you could you can buy a little. Um, I was actually looking at one of these recently. There's a there's a little hole in the wall coffee shop uh, that's for sale just about ten kilometers from here. Uh, it's for sale for twenty five grand. It, it, it makes profit $1,000 a week. That means if I bought it, within the first six months, it's paid off. You know, and it's just, it's just a $1,000 a week thing. It's, you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to pour my heart into that. It's already managed everything else. I'm thinking about buying half of it and get leaving the other half. Anyway, it's, it's just interesting, right? Does that make sense? It's just a little thing. It's making a thousand bucks a week. It's not a big, it's not a big, it's not a big deal. Who asked me that question about about um, Holly? Does that make sense, Holly? It's like, it's, not, it's not a big deal, right? It, it's 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 there. It's available. There's so much there. I remember um, when I was 23, it, it, I, I bought some ATMs. I don't know. Is this the same in the United States? I can't remember. I think so. In, in Australia, when you when you go to the ATM and get money out, um, there's like a two dollar fifty charge. Right. If you get these personalized ATMs. Well, anyway, um, I bought a couple of them. And every time all I had to do is fill them up with money. And every time someone wanted to get the money out of my machine, I got two dollars fifty. I was never passionate about it at all. And then, you know, so it was just it was basically like a little vending machine business. And I had them at a, a couple of service stations, or gas stations, and uh, I had them on the side of a, uh, a local pub. Does, does that make sense, guys? Like it wasn't I didn't. It was just a thing that I that I had. Right? It was just a different structure. You had one as well, Susan. Yeah, you, you did it too. Yeah. So th there's just it's just infinite. Does that make sense? But but the problem is is because we get locked into all these other ideas of, of what it takes and what it is, and oh, oh well, I gotta you know I've gotta have my beads and I've gotta have certain incantations. Guys, I've never been to a billionaire's house that has on his wall, "I love money, money loves me, uh, money flows to me in infinite abundance." He's not simply saying that because he understands that it, 
It doesn't matter what he chants to the universe to try to convince himself. He, it doesn't matter. There's just a, there, there's just a, there's just a structure. And, and all you need to do, if you want to receive a lot of it, which there's no reason not to, you may as well, you may as well receive a lot of it because you add a lot of value to others in a way they want to get, they want to pay for it. And it doesn't say you need to get everything you need to do has to be paid for. Does that make sense? You know, not everything needs to needs to do that way. I'm just saying the structure for those of you who wants to receive it, this is this is what you got to do. And you can have charities and other things and you can do other things over here, which, you know, art that you could just give away or writing and not worry about the money. Cool. 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 How's everyone going? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Yeah, so, so you can all choose to have as much of it. You just need to understand the structure. And you can't blame your past. You just didn't understand the structure. Is that fair to say? And so your job, if you want to have a lot of it, is to find a way uh, to add value to other people in a way they want it, not in a way you think that they should have it, <laughs> you know, in a way they want it. All right, cool. That's what they want. And, you know, that's why some of my favorite um, in industries, the education industry, the marketing industry, the mindset industry, like I like these industries and I understand them. I know how people want to pay for it. I, I you know, deliver great value. And so the first step is do it with your time. And then the second step is to understand how it is done without your time, right? But one step at a time, which is all good. Oh, you can have it, Jude, if I don't even know if I'm going to get it. I don't even know if I'm going to get it. It's just, I mean, there's, there's an infinite amount of opportunities, really. There is. And then also those of you go, but Chris, don't you need money to make money? There's an infinite amount of people that have money that are just looking somewhere to put it. I promise you. Once you realize that that for every person who is uh, that has money, they're looking to give it to someone to turn it into more. I know I'm one of them. You're like, well, where can I put this? Who's going to do it? And one of the best things I love to do is find a business, uh, be the investor in it, own half or a bit more than half, have them actually run it and they get profits. Yeah, so there's lots. There's lots, lots of options, hey? Eh? 